Tourism Insights is an effort from members and supporters of the VenusProject.com resource-based economy and is not an official spokesperson, representative, or act in any official capacity and serves only to encourage, support, and motivate other TVP activists. and welcome to Activism Insights, the show that's dedicated specifically, solely, and exclusively to the venusproject.com resource-based economy activists who are out there in the field. We know that you're there. We know how hard you work every day, and this show is dedicated to you. We have a wonderful, wonderful uh, guest that we have on the show today. And first, I'd like to thank everybody and, and, and introduce Stan Azine, who's a tremendous uh, activist for the VenusProject.com resource-based economy and has, uh, I've, I, you know, I remember you way back in Zeitgeist days, man. I remember in those days, I think you were like on a moderator or something, but I remember you from way back and he's just been so active. Uh, he does a lot of very serious work that's behind the scenes that is being developed and, and hashed through and works very hard. And I'd like to introduce him. This is Stan Azine. And Stan, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Luke. I'm glad to be here. Um, yes, I've been I've been helping the Venus Project uh, for quite some time, but uh, I learned about it uh, actually by accident. I watched... Uh, uh, Future by Design movie, and uh, by the pure chance, I was living near Venus, so wow. it's just a two-hour drive, and I was fascinated by you know by everything, and I decided to just drive there and and see that uh, see everything, you know, by myself and uh, speak to Jacques, speak to Roxanne, and but um, it, everything was. I mean, this is exciting uh, to learn that something new exists that uh, is an alternative out there that you can uh, look uh, and and try to actually, you know, implement it in your life right now and actually plan for the future. But I was not um, I was not hundred percent in this idea right away. I was I had my um, had my questions. I had my reservations. You know, I, sure, I sure. was I was curious. Uh, I was asking about. I was asking them lots of questions and you know try to be there as much as I can because you know it's um, lots of uh, things from my background did not match with that. But uh, I learned a lot about it. I did additional additional research and um, I can tell you that. Uh, Right now, I don't see any other organization that uh, that provide alternative that that detailed and that uh, globally oriented for everybody and exclusive for everybody that out there. Yeah, I'm with you on that, and I think a lot of others are too. Um, are you hearing me? Yes. Okay, far out. Uh, so, and actually, and you're from Moldova, is that correct? And you came to this country. Correct. Yeah, I'm from Respub Republic of Moldavia. It uh, it was ex Soviet Union Republic uh, after Soviet Union collapse in uh, 1991. It became independent country, and I came in here in 2007. And after, um, you know, after after learning my English and getting my, you know, my. Um, <laughs> Uh, my my situation more or less stable. I was able, you know, able to see what what is going on and interact with people and learn more about the country, about you know what's going on. And but um, it's interesting. It's interesting. You know, uh, I also would like to mention that uh, when I when I actually came here, I was more business oriented because I yeah. thought, you know, when we came in here, there where is the capitalism yeah. work as it should not like in any other countries. So I would like to learn about it and start my business, start my uh, my things and, and run it there. Um, but uh, when I had to stay, take some prerequisites for my degree, uh, I took sociology. Mm. And, uh, I, I took sociology before, but it was a little bit, you know, a little bit different at back, back in Moldavia when I got my first education. Okay. But um, you know, I took sociology here and I opened the book and in the book I saw the chart when it was uh, the chart was um, 
showing that distribution of, of wealth in this country, that's how I learned about 1%. Mm. So I asked my teacher, is that uh, some kind of uh, typo here? How can 1% can earn uh, that much? So, and uh, it's actually stemmed from there. Whoa. Yeah, what did, how do you reply? Yeah, well, of course it is. That's how it is. <laughs> yeah, well, this is how it is. And she, you know, she tried to explain me that how the system works and why is that. <laughs> but, you know, I, 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 to, to give her credit, she was uh, unbiased and tried to present me with the information wow. and tried to present me with additional sources I can read. So I start reading, start watching movies, start talking to people, you know, start to learn about this stuff. So, and actually, this is where I am right now. Out of sight. Well, I feel very fortunate that you're on board with this. You do so much work. I'd like to talk a little bit about that. You gave a Absolutely. wonderful, wonderful presentation. This will have a link to it. It's on YouTube where you did a, a fantastic presentation on transition, how we get from here to there at Jock's 100th birthday centennial, centennial celebration that was last year in March uh, 2016. It was a wonderful presentation. We'll have a link for that. Um, you you do so much. What what are some of the things to help us that are out in the field to know about what's going on? Uh, what could you add about how we get from here to there? What kind of information can we use? And when we talk to people, to let them know uh, because it was so far reaching. Your presentation is really good. Absolutely. Um, to actually uh, for, for this presentation, I would like to mention that. Um, it's always it was it always was a question. This is the most um, uh, most fuzzy question for me was all the time. How do we get? How we get over this uh, system that developed for uh, you know for millions yeah. and millions of years? And you always expect to have some kind of you know magic yeah. uh, magic pill or rocket somewhere in travel you know and yes. in you know in the future. But uh, the more you learn about it, the more you understand that you have to have you have to take incremental steps. And because this system is developed for millions of years, we're not going to change it in a decade, and maybe even a hundred of years. And a lots of things that I use in, in I use in this presentation, I took from Jacques. Uh, I took to his ideas and I actually I, I tried to expand on them, try to do a, a, you know additional uh, research on that and how it, uh, everything can transpire. But uh, I'm, I would like to point out that this is one of the scenarios. This is not necessary scenarios, but we have to take. This is, as for right now, best case scenario. Mm -hmm. Uh, that we would we would take in and actually and this has evolved, but it, it can be a lots of different intermediate steps and different branches anywhere because systems systems they evolve we they, it's living breathing organisms we are organism and we are part of the larger organism that react to uh, different stimuli and different change in the environment so we have to take into account but however however I think this is very important that understand that this is even you know um, if we look into the Venus project, if we look into information that we already have, because um, uh, we, you don't have to have a very far advanced degree to actually be able to look, although you have to be able to learn new things and have to understand how yes. the system work and how other system can work, you have to expand your horizons as well. But it, it's very, it's very uh, important to understand that we can reach. This is attainable right now. It was attainable actually when uh, 100 years ago when we start to get, you know, manufacturers and uh, rudimentary automation. So uh, I, I decided to address this topic because it was. Um, I I feel that this is one of the questions that everybody asks. That everybody mm -hmm. who learn about the Venus Project initially, who learn about the resource-based economy, they saying, "Okay, well, this is very nice. This is sound very good. We're on board right. with the idea. How we can get there?" So this is the steps we can we can uh, you know we can take over time. And as a as a volunteers and a, a people who are out there, as we right now working with the Venus Project, working with the other people. Uh, trying to introduce this direction, it is very important to understand that um, what we're actually talking about. Right. Because um, as you, we, we have this uh, conversation uh, online that uh, through through chat that you know whatever you say, whatever you do, you always somebody came in and you know they try to discredit you right away. <laughs> yeah. Like they did, you know, with the obituary of Jacques. It, it sure. was. I yes. still. Uh, 
uh, I mean, get over it that even his obituary, they found somebody who say, oh, Fresk is incorrect. Okay, he's incorrect. Point out, provide useful, you know, useful yes. uh, tick. You know, something, something that it, it just to say it's incorrect. It's it's the same thing. If somebody say it is just a utopia, right? Right, right. So when we're out there, it's very important to know what we're talking about. So um, we 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 need to study basics in psychology, basics in sociology, basics in economics. It's free courses out there. It's books out there, so we can read and understand how the system work, how we can present. Well, from my from my own perspective. Uh, I feel that we don't have to criticize the system anymore because it's a lot of a, a lot of critique out there and right. actually constructive criticism out there. Mm -hmm. But um, we don't have to focus on that because uh, I mean, if you I um, I don't know how about you look, but from my experience that when I uh, talk to people, even who are really really involved in this system and have very uh, was very successful and it is very successful, if you even if you dig a little deeper yeah. they understand that this is yeah totally. they understand that right. this is absolute you know uh, yes. not right, right. <laughs> let's put it this way yes. so uh, it is important to understand what kind of alternatives we have and present this alternative to people yes so uh, if you i mean uh, for right now of course it's, uh, venus project is all inclusive organization but we have to understand that with limited resources that we have right now uh, it is important that you will not waste your time on people who are fighting uh, this idea with you. So when you present to somebody, try to, uh, again to quote uh, Fresco, to reach somebody who is already halfway there. They already have the questions, they already understand that this is, this is not right, this is not where, where it should go, this is not uh, what the values actually what we, that the values of the society even in this system this is not how it's operate not according to these values not according right. to brotherhood of man love your neighbor and and stuff like that right how, how you can love your neighbor if you have to compete for the survival totally so yeah try to reach uh, who's uh, who's uh, halfway there asking questions try to lead him to a, a certain uh, to a certain information um, the, also um, I feel that in, that's very important that uh, we actually try not to think that this is something that what what uh, we understand it's clear for us to understand it, that somebody else will pick it up right away because right. We, people like this is uh, completely from completely different environment completely different situation so uh, at some time it is I uh, need to be very patient and sometime People just cannot afford to let go. They understand you. They understand. They might be on board uh, emotionally with you, but um, in their mind, they just they just can't let go the identity that heavily provide them from their you know from the birth and from the upbringing and from yeah. the peer pressure. Sure. So, in the same time, it is very important to talk to everybody about this because you never know you know, where the roots actually, you know, where the seeds actually take root. I totally agree. And, you know, if we have a way and we, as we gain more understanding about how to reach people, that people reflect their environment and it, it, that we can communicate with them and reach them on some level, leaving them, somebody has always said, and I like it, I like the kind of the phrase is that you're planting seeds. And if we all do our job, of trying to reach people they get a little bit from you what you've talked about they see in the newspaper about their water or war or whatever it is and then they hear it from somebody else uh, pretty soon that begins to be within the, their world their realm what what they're starting to think about and what they talk about and then you know we should talk about what a 10-year project is Jacques often refers to some people hardwired that is that they have that they're so into it that it's almost impossible for them to give it up at that time, I mean, and I, I don't know if you've experienced this, Stan, but so many times when I've had the chance to spend time with people over a short period of time or a long, that often it's always the same initial rejection, and I call it initial rejection. We always talk about things as though finality. Joe's an asshole. Well, Joe's an asshole right now, but in, in next week he could be different. We always show that when someone rejects, or says, oh, that'll never work. When you describe something to it, they don't embrace it and, and go with it. 
that that's initial rejection. And many, many times I've heard the same thing. That'll never happen. Then, after a while, when I'm around them and they're exposed to me, after a while, then I end up getting, in most cases, well, that'll never happen in my lifetime. Which, to me, instantly signifies that, yes, they totally get it, that of course it can happen. Of course we have the ability and the resources. Of course our values are screwed up because of the conditions that necessitate them. And so then, do you, have you ever experienced that? Well, it won't happen in my lifetime. When at first they said, ah, oh, that'll never happen. Well, this is, I think this is different. This is very important situation and very important step because we're talking about, you know, never happen as an infinity. <laughs> It never happened for me. Right. So that's, this is the huge step. This is not yes. easy step. No. This is for everybody's huge step. And uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, that I was not on board with that 100%. I like this idea. I like that, you know, uh, how Jacques presents stuff. I like that he goes and uh, he, he, uh, he was going in lots of different fields. But I was skeptical. I was very yeah. skeptical, and I was, uh, and I ask him, ask him questions. I ask him question. I ask Roxanne question. I'm looking for, you know, what's different uh, situation happen. You know, how sight. people try to uh, get utopias. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, try to try to run them or do something. You know, to the community try to be sustainable and right. you know all sure. the history. And you can see that this pattern, and you can see that this is how it can be developed. If you learn about the technology, this is how you. Uh, how you actually, you know, go about, and uh, yeah, I, I definitely agree. This is, this is, um, this is uh, something that uh, it is fundamental for us that we are uh, getting this new idea, and it sounds so good. Uh, so we automatically became skeptical, and, and I think this is this is the great way yes. to go about things. This is the, you know, I think it's a proper way to react. <sighs> totally agree. Because you know, if somebody from the beginning getting, oh, 100% with that, you know, that that might be too enthusiastic and down the road can be problematic. You're right. Two words for that, Liz, what, what we see exemplified in the nation of America, where it's called, you know, gullibility. That is the willingness to eat, to easily accept and believe or credulous, which means they'll believe to a certain point when they don't want to look like an idiot. It's too much, uh, just em ready to embrace, yes, whatever. Getting, and then so when people would say that, that, you know, at first they, they're totally rejected, it's initial rejection, and then later they begin to accept it. They just think, why should I do anything if it's not going to happen in my lifetime? Well, that'll never happen in my lifetime. At least they can accept it. At which point then I point out things that they can relate to, like you wouldn't have that hip replacement. If people said, well, it'll never happen, we still have tooling and die, and I'm only going to be around for the next 30. If everybody felt that way, that it'll never happen in their lifetime, you wouldn't have most technology today because it's built upon other people's work, a constantly evolving, a constant emergence of technology. And so they would often relate to that. They could see, well, yeah, you're right. You know, it didn't happen in their lifetime, but it was something that they knew should happen, and they put time into it. So I would use that as a counter. You know, when people have initial rejection and they get to the point where this won't happen in my lifetime. But I mean, you're hip that it can happen. We possess the abilities. We need to work for that. And then I think what is most difficult and which I think has been lacking in the organization is what do I do now? I had a lot of people that I talked to and a lot of people totally got it. When we reach somebody who says, yes, you know, I, I like this is absolutely I, I can totally understand. What do I do? What do I do right now? When I get home, what do I do? And in the past, it's been kind of ambiguous. You know, well, you know, read what, get the book, read it, go online, you know, watch as many movies. But there wasn't a specific concrete where it seems like today we've reached the point where we have training. We have very intensified training in um, orientation, uh, POC, point of contacts, and this socio cybernearing And so now it seems more cohesive on how to help people from the beginning to empower them and give them the ability to become activists. Is there, and when we're trying to reach people, um, that would be something that we should emphasize, right? To continue their training. Once they've learned, we actually have training ready for them. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. This is, you, you hit nail on the head. Uh, the thing is, you know, this is not about individual. 
it is it is you know the the last uh, last frontier for the mind to give up it to give up this idea but this is need to have everything need to happen for me so right, right. that's as you mentioned we will never have anything any progress in anywhere if people was, were working only for their self interest we are evolved as a empathic species what does it mean on the global level? We empathic in our group, we empathic with our families or even of our friends, but what does it mean as a global family? It means that what you do is going to impact everybody and you definitely not going to uh, going to see the results. But you will know that uh, that the mind and the development and the betterment of human, you you're part of it and you actually contribute it's um i don't know where i got this i don't remember when i got this uh, uh, expression but uh we planting a tree planting a trees in the shadow of which our grandkids grandkids will sit so this is you know this is the thinking this is the thing that need to that need to actually you know sink in that yes. this this is what actually happened. You're doing it for your children, doing it for your grandchildren. You're doing it for this betterment of humanity. If you like something that's happening right now, I mean, if you're enjoying uh, some kind of technology, we enjoy an internet, we enjoy an air conditioning, we enjoy an abundance of food, although it's Russian for money right now. So uh, imagine what else can happen for the human and the, the human who come next will feel and and be curious about this thing is exactly as you are so you contributed to it it's a lot of people you know we don't know about who actually work their asses off to to uh, make it happen and uh we actually you know uh, although we don't know their names we can embrace that because this is human experience this yes is so um if we're talking about what needs to be done right now, of course, it's a self-education. You can try to you have to be educated about the topic. It's the different things. It's a different thing between being formed and between and you know. Be, to, I'm sorry. It's a difference between to be informed and be educated on the topic. Because if you just inform, you have you know just a little presentation, just you know little information, just some surface thing. And if you feel that this is uh, appealing to you, or you feel that they, you understand, you have to dig deeper for everything, and you have to understand that how it works and why it's developed this way. So that's why you know that's why I'm actually you know uh, value more uh, future by design and um, uh, you know over over the other things. Uh, because it's actually show Fresco how he developed these ideas. You know, he, uh, Gizeki talked to him about it, and he actually, you know, going from a different perspective. He not just see it, you know, one day and it's done on him. Right. Nobody, nobody goes through that. You know, if you feel that that happened to you, you know, you're missing a lot in life. Okay, so uh, what what can be done right now? Uh, as as right now, you know, try to be uh, try to be more informed of what kind of alternatives we have, how we can get into the system. Of course, we have. Uh, it's a big difference between you know people just self educated, try to be self educated about the Venus Project and research based economy, and right now that the cor educational courses that we have. But of course, we have room for improvement, and we will improve because we're constantly working on that. Yes. It takes some time because we were doing volunteering work and, you know, we all have a life and have to, uh, you know, uh, work for, uh, to, to support ourselves. Yeah. But we, we get an attraction. This is very, it's slow but steady. Yes, it is. So, um, you know, and it also seems like when there is uh, participation, when a person uh, perhaps, and everyone has skills. Uh, some people think, well, what can I really do? I don't know all that much. And it just simply isn't true. That's what we've been trained to do is reduce our own potential is that when they interact, when they join uh, and participate in whether it's linguistic or it's in media or social media or whatever it is, when they begin to participate with that, their own interaction and their knowledge base becomes increased. They have a wider uh, range of thought and their activity and their participation, they develop more. Uh, they're also exposed around that kind of thinking more. And so there's so many different opportunities for members and supporters to become involved. So many different projects. You're a Venus Project a volunteer, but you really do some wonderful work. What can you tell us about some of the things that you do for the Venus Project research? Well, 
Yeah, well, the, actually, actually, what what we're doing right now, we're trying to streamline the social media. We're trying to develop next step that uh, we, you know, that actually will make sense before we we try to reach the city. Or, but of course, if we will go to do the city, we'll do that. But uh, I'm not going to give up more on that because it needs to be announced when it's going to be ready. Sure. Uh, uh, we working with the different people all the time. We try to reach out to uh, different um, uh, professionals to get them on board and also volunteers. Uh, we're trying to uh, get the new uh, website, get online, uh, and it it is it is a lots of lots of work. Uh, yes, it is. Also translations, also uh, communication with you know different cultures, different languages. Uh, we try to get the uh, main website. Uh, revamp the main website and make it more um, um, more streamlined and uh, include uh, different languages translations uh, for their for the website because uh, right now it's in English and uh, lots of people speak speak English but we have uh, lots of people who working and translating to many many different languages yes and they people visit visit the website we can see that they visit from all around the world. So we try to uh, include this um, as, as you know, one of their one of the steps that that need to be uh, taken toward the streamlining of our presentation. Um, on the topic, you know, what people can do, uh, even they, if they don't have, don't feel that they don't have proper skills, uh, you can find lots of stuff online that is free. You can download lots of free programs, lots of free uh, tutorials, and actually go through the courses. You know, Open Khan Academy, Open Lots of. We actually, I think we have. Uh, we need to rotate it again a couple of times. We had huge list of their open sources that be, that uh, anybody can use to get uh, get any skills with that with uh, you know useful skills because you know video editing, audio editing, uh, picture, you know Photoshop, all this stuff. It's actually you know. Uh, Anybody can develop it on on the own time. Sure, we 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 can have some playwrights. Uh, we we can do some little uh, you know uh, little videos and little movies. We can do animations. It's a lots of educational stuff that we uh, need to have and actually to go out there to be able to reach people and actually present a lot of concepts that wasn't covered yet. So you can see, you know, within the Venus project right now and all about the resource based economy, it's still a lot of a lot of a lots of things that we did not cover yet. The lots of things right. that wasn't released, not because we try to withhold this information, but because it's a very raw Yes. Very raw stage, so sure, we will sure. try to develop this uh, certain presentations for it. Yeah, so sorry. you know, uh, and, and if you if somebody will listen to it and still have you know doubts in the mind, reach out uh, in the mind, reach out to us, ask us what you uh, would tell us what you can do, uh, tell us what you would like to do, and maybe you know we can uh, we can point out that you know direction that you can. Uh, you can develop the skill that actually will benefit you and and the project. Absolutely. And, you know, people think I don't have skills. Whatever language that they're speaking, that they can do translations. There's, there's help needed even in English. That social media, that which they're participating in, they can be instrumental in helping uh, spread awareness and assist others who are maintaining those pages. Everything's done by volunteer, man. So it's all up to us on how well, if you don't like the way things are looking, then jump in, offer to help. We welcome everyone's participation. Um, so you really have done so many. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the Venus Project International, TVP International. Well, the Venus Project International, this is the concept that uh, Fresco actually talked about. This is, I don't know if you uh, remember that it was, it was similar to a Project Americana that he tried to start it here. Have you heard Not about familiar. that? No, 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 okay. tell us. <laughs> so uh, th uh, this is the idea of their, um, of the society that, uh, that uh, you know, the, uh, a pre preliminary step to a resource-based economy on their uh, nation level. Right. So this is basically, you know, when we get to to the to the point when we can get countries to participate in the Venus Project International, meaning that it will be assigned certain part of land where uh, lots of different countries uh, actually, you know, chip in and try to build a joint venture that will be guided by the Venus Project 
as a step to the resource based economy. Excellent. So this is we're talking already. You know, we're talking already uh, uh, something that already, that will surpass the United Nations. Right. right Transition now. years down the road yeah. as it develops yeah. and gets it's, to that point. Yes. Okay. Yes. If we're talking specifically to it, but before that, you know, we have to. We have to do lots of different steps. Sure. Uh, you know, we, we have uh, lots of things that develop uh, and, and still in development because we d- does not have resources or uh, professionals or both. But, you know, it's a movie, it's animations, it's, you know, it, it, lots of it's a game uh, or actually, you know, we have a concept for the game that based, right. you know, on the, uh, on the strategy that uh, resource based economy can be uh, introduction for somebody else. absolutely and all of these steps and plans and phases are procedures this is what attracted me more than anything and why i don't subscribe like participate petitions i don't do any of that stuff because none of them have a plan none of them have gone through the uh, factors that shape human behavior and the plan to deal with that you know, it's an established system. It's not hodgepodge. It has established procedures, and even those undergo change as the factors that help shape them are constantly changing every day uh, through socioeconomic, religious, all of these things as they emerge. We have steps, established procedure on how things work. And so we just have to get to that point. And the phases of the of the Venus Project have always been outlined. Phase one was the established uh example uh, there in Venus Floors, the research centers. Phase two was the movie, which we're all working on. And uh, I still get the music out for the fundraiser and we can all participate in that. So, you know, it's as we reach these stages, there are procedures for that, aren't there? Uh, for the for their initials, yes, we have we what's we, we're developing that. It is not something that we solidly, you know, we solidly have. It is uh, it is more we we try to change and adapt to what we have right now. But we uh, we initiate a lot of things that can take on if we will have uh, if we will have proper funding and proper uh, and we can get proper. Uh, uh, proper professionals to actually pl- implement that and then vol- get volunteers on board to help mm-hmm. because you know we can which we, we cannot just you know uh, right. sit, sit and wait for anything right. but we, we try to work through lots of things and lots of things right uh, lots of things actually catching on people reach out to Roxanne uh, and you know they they asking what they can do and actually you know uh, this is not just uh, uh, just a person who would like to, you know, uh, participate in the social media or something, uh, something similar to it. It's people, you know, with uh, with highly skilled professionals. Mm. But we still have, we still have, um, we still have to actually um, outline what what we would what we're going to do when we're going to do. Because, right. you know, if we have overall goal, this is not changing. We have overall steps, which is not changing. But in between, because of the situation, because we actually, you know, it's taking so long. You know, I heard a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of feedback like this. Oh, why you didn't, <laughs> yeah, why you didn't build, yeah, why you haven't built a city yet? You, yeah, know? Right. You, know, you know, many, many years, you know, so that's, you know, where it starts. It starts from understanding how the thing works. How the things work and how things develop, because nothing is developed, even in ten. You know, we we're not talking about you know uh, open a soup kitchen. We're not talking about uh, just you know shelter for homeless or shelter for animals. We're talking about change in the city in the society, and this has never happened. Uh, never happened fast. And we not try to implement, you know, some kind of revolution or try to force right. this just on society because uh, it's never it it never end up to anything good. A lot of people get hurt, and for the little change, it's a lot of sacrifice. Yes, you know, I, actually, a needed sacrifice. So what we actually doing? Uh, we we we're building we're building this momentum, we're building this movement, we're building this idea, we're building this process. No, this is you know this is the root of their 
of the change right now. We're building this process, and uh, and we know where we're going, and we know we know where we want to go. Right. So this is is very important. And if you mean uh, that by procedure, then yes, we have we have this procedure in place. Right on. And it's you know also this movement, uh, our own participation, our own learning. Um, that our values are changing, which has to be a very, very important factor being prepared for the future. And we begin to adopt a different way that we live, the way that we purchase or, or the lack of purchasing crap that we don't need. And so our values begin to become in line and become balanced and uh, actually would, as time goes on, be ready to live in a city. You know, I often when people say, you know, in fact, one of the episodes on this channel is going to be, why don't we build a city? Where's the city? I'm ready to go. And our values, and I've heard Jock say, well, you, you know, if you built a city and you brought all of your people together right now and moved in, you'd be killing each other by the end of the week because of the values you have today. You know, and I use an example that everyone laughs at, but they totally relate to. And some of the values would be like, well, don't be looking at my girl. <laughs> you know, this possessive competition. People aren't ready. Any of us still have personality conflicts that we have with someone because of our indoctrination. But through participation in this movement based on social and environmental, our own values begin to change and the values in our children begin to change. We raise them up with different values, more balanced and improved values that would be ready for it to live in such a city. So, uh, you know, yeah, that's a lot of people get that. Well, why isn't there a city? You know, let's build it. They, which to me is kind of vocal and, and you know, exemplary that they haven't read enough yet. They really don't know the, the processes involved of the, and the, the aims and goals of the Venus Project. They don't understand their values aren't there yet. And it takes work. It's hard to cast off, you know, a lifetime of indoctrination of stuff that's, you know, really not based on reality or truth. <laughs> so well, that, that this is absolutely, you know, this is human condition. Nothing you can do about that. Nothing I can do about that. Nothing nobody can do with the, about that. The neuron connection grows with the specific um, speed. You cannot dissolve this very fast and you cannot grow it very fast. You have to go through specific uh, training I mean, you have to train yourself, meaning through education, through exposure, to, you know, thinking about these things. Try to understand that, you know, what, what the thing is, you know, we, we, we trained to for, for we trained to think this way. You have to understand that everything you know and everything you say was developed long time before you were born. So you're already born in a situation, and, and if you feel that something that you are something that you personally develop and nobody knew about it, I can guarantee you. Look on the Facebook, look on yeah. the Twitter, look on whatever. People doing the same thing. Everybody thinks they're unique until they act. Yes. And by the action, you can see that we actually, you know, more the same that we are different. So. Don't if you if somebody expect to this change to happen if somebody ex very fast then you know this is a delusional thinking this is magical thinking so uh, the the thing is that we, what what need to be uh, need to be understood that the change come from uh, from within meaning that your value as you mentioned your values your uh, perceptions are changing. And it, they are changing by when you broaden your horizons, no matter you like it or not, because lots of experiences that will change you and change you for the better may not be pleasant. Nobody uh, will be happy to actually, you know, to understand that we are a bundle of tropisms. <laughs> so we just, we react in organisms. So it's just, you know, it's something about feeling, it's something about, you know, spiritual connection. <laughs> yes, yes, this is, you feel the connection, but you feel the connection if you are in a proper environment. If you know that nothing uh, actually threatens you, if you have nothing to, you know, nothing to fight for, that's how you, you know, how you feel connection with, the, with your fellow human being and with the other uh, you know, living beings on the planet. So uh, it is very important to understand that it takes time. If if it takes time for us to learn new things, this is this is the reality, and we have to you know we have to adjust to it. 
And to, to understand that really empowers us. When we understand that the guy's an asshole, you know, spouting stuff off that's intentionally hurtful, that he's just reflecting. If he didn't speak up, he wouldn't be, you know, doing what he's supposed to do. And so, you know, uh, a lot of his understanding that even ourselves uh, have been conditioned in the way we respond, the way that we absorb, the way we cognitively associate things, which is really, I mean, when you look at it, our, even our way of thinking is totally effed up. Because of, we have to think, we have to think of what's involved at the end of the day, work tomorrow, how much money, all of these things and values based on an outdated system, like you said, it was created hundreds of years ago. And so our understandings, the more that we realize that, the more that we learn how to talk to people, and the way that we learn from others' experiences who can share information on how they're reaching people, where the where we're going and that work is being done and that none of us are alone, uh, that just because you don't see it in your own town right now doesn't mean that there's action happening all over the planet. And headquarters is deep and deeply involved in the architecture to help us get from here to there. And it's always nice to learn more. And so we've we've learned a little bit about the TVP International is more for a global uh, outlook of a resource based economy when we've reached that point. Um, anything else you could add about the TVP International? Well, um, I would I would not uh, really add anything else about because that step is long uh, is long ahead of us. Yeah, yeah, it is better to deal with what we have right now. Gotcha. And you know uh, we. We're talking about we're talking about changing our values mostly right now, and I would like to mention also that we have limited capacity of their of our attention span, and uh, what is important right now that uh, because you're learning new information, it have to go and you know have to process it on some level, and when you process that process that that you your brain working on that your brain trying to you know reach out and build new connections and this new connection have to came from where if you already have there lots of tv lots of music you know whatever whatever happened if you have uh, if you preoccupied with something else you have to give it up this is how value change you nothing will be changing if you're not going to give up something that you you know constantly preoccupied with and actually, you know, not enhancing your life and somebody right. else's life. Yeah, so yeah. that's limit. We have limited capacity of their, you know, of their attention. We have limited capacity capacity of the processing power in our brain. So, you know, when you give up, when you give up certain things that you've, you've been obsessed with, and uh, well, obsessed. I'm, I'm using very strong word, but you know, th this is to illustrate. I'm not. I does not mean as the you know, as the illness obsession. Right, preoccupied. Right? Preoccupied, yeah. you know, but it, a little bit more than just preoccupied. Something that preoccupied you, it's not you preoccupied, you. you're preoccupied by it. Yes, you know what yes. I mean? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if consumed. you're preoccupied by something, consumed by it, yes. And, and this has become something that you cannot let go. This is the first thing that you need to let go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and because it doesn't do anything. It doesn't help your own you know your own development which you then affects other people wherever you are you become real it becomes exemplified to the way you behave and neither does it do anything for 60 or whatever a thousand people it's starved to death preoccupied crap that have nothing to do with the oxygen you breathe the food quantity of any of that so there is some sacrifice involved and uh, I, wouldn't you say that for some of us they look forward to that because they realize that it's a, a nowhere event, that it's a null and void action. And so we but again, it's not, it's not happen. It's not going to happen right away. Absolutely. Nobody, nobody can drop uh, yeah. a habit that developed through years and years in one night. So, and if you're going through that, if you actually try actively going through that, you will understand how other people feel when you try to change them. Dig it. Good Imagine one. if somebody will try to de de do it for you. Whatever you do, you develop and uh, we, you try to get rid of the of their uh, of your routine or of your habit. And this this thing is exactly exactly happening with the other person when you try to present the new information. You try yes. to get rid of, get rid of you try to make them get rid of their of their um, habits of thinking. 
And this is have so much inertia that you don't have to give him a fish. You have to learn him how to fish. Um, I'm sorry, you have to teach him how to fish. Sure. When you teach him how to fish, meaning that you point out, you're not telling the person what person need to do. You point out the information. If person actually start looking to it information in the information, person start uh, learning about it. So you know, again, you can bring horse to the water. But totally. Yeah. Make him drink. You cannot right. make him drink. Yes. Absolutely. And it, sometimes it's just initial rejection. They hear it from you, what you talked about, they see on the news, they hear on the newspaper. Then someone else, they, they hear it from them, you know, this line of thinking, this line of reasoning. And uh, so it does take time. But it's, I still think that it's initial, that the more I, not any person that I've ever talked to didn't want to live as long as they could, spend time with those they love and care about. You know, have the time in this planet while they're alive to pursue things that bring them joy or contentment. Everybody shares that. And so I, I can't imagine anyone, uh, even the guys that make bombs, even the people in defense, you know, some of them sincerely believe that that's how you protect. And that as people get a wider range of information and over a period of time, who on earth would want to keep this kind of a system of injust? hostile, unpredictably violent and, and immoral system continued when such a wonderful alternative based on human and environmental. I, I think they just need more information. And I always think that it's initial. You stick with them long enough. I mean, they see it. They begin to come around. And yeah, I think you're absolutely it's right. Little, it's little. And, you know, you can, Jock said, you can't talk to somebody in 20 minutes and change their values. It's highly unpredict unprobable, you know, a lifetime of stuff. Doesn't he give an example where he goes, like, you know, an example would be like there's a bunch of uh, tribesmen, you know, going around a fire and they're jumping up and down as they go in a circle. And it's like he comes up to him and he says, hey, jumping up and down doesn't do anything. And they're like, OK, we'll stop. <laughs> you know, they're not going to. It's something that they've grown up with. And for some people to give up on the system, it's almost like treasonous for them to even think, you know, that they would be, that it, that this is not the best system. America is the greatest and on and on. And uh, so it just takes information. And, uh, and, you know, I don't know where I was going with that, except that it's patience, like you said, and uh, becoming uh, fluent in our understandings, having a knowledge base where we can talk to others. And a lot of that has to do with our own growth, our own, the way that we keep persistently learning more and more and getting rid of our old values and becoming the values that we wish to see, the kind of knowledge that we know we can attain to start behaving like that. And that's kind of a sacrifice too. Well, it, uh, it is sacrifice on the personal level, but you actually gain much more. Yes, you gain yes. enormously more from it. Uh, in in that, the thing is, when you when you when you give up all habits, that uh, uh, lots of uh, lots of possibilities, and lots of opportunities open for you for your mind and for your development. Because uh, for something that you you know that you uh, discredited at the beginning, you know, for lots of things, uh, it, it does not mean that you have to accept everything, but you can. Start to find out something that actually can be useful in the lots of different uh, right. areas, even in the some you know in the some um, uh, maybe unappealing stuff. Uh, but you know you can see that you know for example you know if you if you're talking about if you're talking about people you know who are get invested into into this system whatever they do in the military or finance or whatever. Uh, of course, it's it's it, they, you know, they have investment. They all their life invest invest into it, and they're not evil. They the people like you and me. They are appropriate to the environment. They never heard about that. This is working for them, and they feel they have this illusion that this is something that you know, this is something that actually makes sense. But again, uh, from my experience. Uh, even people like that, you know, if you dig dig deep enough, and it's not that deep, uh, they still they they are to understand that this is not right. This is yes. not fair system. Absolutely. Not you know, and what kind of future we're going to have, you know, for they going to have for the, the children going to have? Because lots of stuff happens that we resulting from our actions, and we cannot reverse it overnight. Even if we stop right now, even if we stop fossil fuel development, if we, even if we stop wars right now. If, if even if we uh, 
shift overnight to uh, you know to renewable energies, we will still have lingering effects for for very very long time. So uh, again, it, to, to reiterate, actually, you know, to to you know after after the bottom line, the change starts start within when you start to learn about it. Uh, the change go, goes out when you start to talk to other people. And so like you look doing this channel right now, this is your effort to change the values. This is your effort to outreach. We're talking about these things. People need to know information. And even if they don't understand right now, and this is, does not feel relevant right now, uh, what we're talking about actually, it, it is it is basically benefit everybody. And the system that Venus Project proposes and the resource-based economy concept, this is that like never, we never had this before. We never had this before. And this is not just uh, something that, you know, for a certain group and, you know, we're trying to build something that, uh, that will be perfect. Right. You know, this is, uh, as we see, it, this is actually bringing people together and, and utilize uh, the most untapped resource on our planet is the human mind. Because if human mind does not have any constraints of their, you know, fighting for survival, uh, for competition, you know, toward the drudgery of a repetitive task, human mind evolved to be very, very creative. Human mind evolved to explore. So this is our destiny. This is our, uh, this is our evolution. We, we evolved to be a more sentient being, yes, you know, in the sense that, you know, we want to understand more. We want to reach out more, and technology will help us if we utilize it appropriately. All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good one. Um, well, we're getting into some time. I, I want to keep going. I mean, hey, you know, whenever we meet or wherever we're together you know at the research center or whatever we always people when we're with each other we can speak a language we can look at things that are we would never be able to have the opportunity to look into and discuss and revel on the potential that lies within us all so it's just wonderful to talk with you on some parting Thank words you. yes on parting words to those that are out there in the streets that are that are trying to to help any last parting words that you would offer to, to help them or acknowledge them? Um, I will say don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged if you don't see results. The main result that you do, you know, that we all we all participate in this uh, in our own speed, in our own ability, in our own level. So whatever you do, even if it's feel to you as a small, this is very significant if if a lot of people start doing that totally totally agree and well it's been wonderful to talk with you and i want to acknowledge and thank you for all the work stan stan has done a tremendous amount of behind the scenes he's very uh he's non ego driven so he doesn't talk a lot about it but you've done some wonderful work and i just am very thankful and appreciative and acknowledge you and uh, and look forward to everything and anything that I can ever be in assistance, uh, I would like to help. Um, maybe sometime later in a year, we could have another update from you, see what's new on the horizon, any new developments that you wish to share, and just to see and check in with you to see how things are going. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Luke, for what you do. And actually, lots of people doing lots of work. It's not, you know, one or two or five people. Lots of people do the work. And it's very important. You know, we try to, uh, we, we lots of things that we try to, we try to establish, you know, we establish the group. But because it is fluid, a lots of people doing lots of different stuff. And it is very important. Again, wh whatever, however small it seems, the the all contributions end up adds up i'm sorry so they add up to something you know something greater they it's up yes. to us to pushes us to our next level to uh to the next step to towards resource-based economy absolutely yes thank absolutely. you and, th and and big thanks and you know to everybody who doing that who's spreading this information who learned about this thing and you know uh, and trying to help and and educate ourselves and others yeah totally 
Um, I sure thank you. Uh, this is going to close for this edition. We're going to put up the link. If, for those that haven't seen this presentation from Jock's 100th birthday last year in March, we'll have a link to it. It's a fantastic piece of work. Um, and uh, we'll link to your uh, personal Facebook page. Are there any other uh, areas that you would suggest for people to look that are activists, anything that they may not already be aware of? Uh, they actually uh, they can go on the website and get in the section uh, to get involved and get involved in lots of different projects and actually see what kind of uh, participation we need uh, urgently. But again, you can you can find the project already in development or you can join the group and uh, you know try to see whatever you can help uh, at, at the moment with the, with the different things that are happening. Right on, everyone's invited. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you, buddy. And uh, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. And uh, we'll have a link for everybody. Check out the video presentation uh, on uh, transition, how we get from here to there. It's a wonderful presentation, uh, Stan did. And uh, we wish everyone well. And thank you for joining us and look forward to the next edition of Activism Insights. Thanks a lot, Stan. Thank you very much, Luke. For more information on the VenusProject.com resource-based economy, log on to the VenusProject.com website or check out the VenusProject.com YouTube channels and Facebook pages.